yes, certainly, Mr. Jean-Claude Trichet has plenty to think about. Mr. Trichet, thank you so much for joining us today. Now, in the okay. past, you have been willing to give clarifications to the market. As things stand, do you think that the markets have gotten ahead of themselves? A lot of market participants think that you are ready to raise rates before they thought just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, well, I have nothing to add or to, or to withdraw from what I already said on behalf of the Governing Council. We consider that our present interest rates are appropriate. And as I said, there is nothing new there. We always take the decision which permit us to deliver price stability. And uh, as you know, we are very proud, uh, my colleagues and myself, because uh, after 12 years of the euro, we have delivered an average yearly inflation of 1.97%, less than two, but close to two. And uh, that is very important, of course. It's a track record which is the best since uh, 50 years, if I may, in uh, our own uh, European environment. And it's also something which is, uh, uh, I would say, very important in terms of credit given to the central bank to deliver in the next 10 years. So we have a very solid anchoring of inflation expectations. We trust it is a necessary condition for you know, accompanying the recovery, that solid anchoring of expectations. But German inflation expectations, as measured by inflation-linked bonds, have dropped to 1.97 percent, and this compares to around 2.03 percent before your press conference. Are you satisfied with this, or is this still a level too high? <laughs> no, we are reasoning medium term, and uh, we are reasoning at the level of the 331 million people of the euro area, namely uh, all the 17 countries. Uh, uh, let me only say uh, on, uh, on the average uh, that 1.97%, which is a track record, it's not an expectation, it's a track record. We, it, uh, speaking of facts and figures, I would also say that uh, for Germany in particular, the average year inflation has been 1.5% over the same period because they were working on their own unit labor cost and they did a little bit better than the average. But how vigilant are you exactly on inflation at the moment? Precisely. Uh, solid anchoring of inflation expectations. But again, as I said uh, last time, the present interest rates are appropriate. Nowotny has told us that actually policymakers may not take any decision on possible hike in the first half of the year. Do you agree with this view? I mean, we are never pre-committed. So you will never have, for me, a pre-commitment to do something or not to do something. We will do always what is necessary. It is not by chance that we have delivered price stability over 12 years. It is because we took the appropriate decision when uh, it was necessary. So I would say our credibility is based upon that doctrine. And I understand that very clearly, Mr. Trichet, but of course markets have expectations. Have they gotten the wrong expectations in the last week and a half? I mean, again, their expectations are based upon what they think will be the threats as regards inflation and so forth. But what is much more important, and you mentioned that a moment ago as regards the inflation expectations for one particular country, what is important, they know that we will deliver and they trust us to deliver. And that is, of course, something which is extremely important for them. They trust that we will deliver over the medium term price stability. But they also hang on your every word in the press conference. Yes. Is there a danger <laughs> yes. that, that they are misinterpreting again? Is it, are you confident that they're not misinterpreting what you have said? I, I, don't, <laughs> I will not comment on what the markets are doing with what we say, but what counts is not wor are not words, they are deeds mm -hmm. and we have a track record. That's the reason why we are credible for the future. Mr. Trisha, are you concerned about the fact that some large Euro region banks still remain shut out of markets? Well, again, we, have, uh, we are calling all banks, and uh, our uh, uh, call uh, didn't, never changed uh, since uh, the start of this uh, difficult period. Do all what you can to uh, uh, recapitalize 
uh, through various means, uh, your own earnings, of course, uh, be prudent and cautious as regards uh, uh, your own uh, wages and salaries and packages and so forth. We are telling them uh, that they have to go to market uh, whenever it's possible and necessary. And we also tell them, go to the governments and to the options for recapitalization if and when necessary. So this is a, our permanent call for uh, the, the banks uh, in general. If I and over the last couple of months, has the situation gotten better or, or worse or, or just stagnated? Well, if I look at uh, what has been done by a large number of banks, I would say a large number of them have improved their balance sheet. And uh, I also see, uh, when I look at the aggregate figures that we have as regards the outstanding uh, growth for outstanding credit growth, I see that we are now in a mode of uh, much more dynamic than before uh, uh, growth of, uh, of the outstanding uh, credit, uh, both to the household which are now in positive uh, territory very clearly, and for the non-financial corporate where we were negative and now we are uh, at zero. And uh, I expect uh, really that it will continue to go in the right direction. So it permits me also to mention the fact that uh, as regards the real economy, since the start of the recovery in the euro area, namely the third quarter of uh, 2009, we have quarter after quarter, been, month after month, been uh, positively uh, surprised, mm -hmm. not, you know, fantastically positively, but there has been a number of surprises. And the, the, the last figures I have, the PMI in particular, the survey figures are confirming that uh, we are, month after month, uh, experiencing that recovery which started uh, uh, several quarters ago. So we never claim victory. We are always very prudent, very cautious. We have to remain, again, prudent and cautious. But again, uh, it's good to see that uh, the recovery is confirming month after month. So, Trichet, for the bank funding, is there um, an idea, or would you be favourable, for example, putting on condition that these addicted bank prob these addicted banks would just get need to pay a higher interest rate? Because that would be a pretty easy way to, to wean them off this cheap money. Well, again, the, the problem uh, we are looking at is a, a more general problem. The banks in general have to do the job and uh, uh, go to the market them by themselves. And we have to avoid, of course, that they would be uh, addicted, as you say. And we have also the important issue, which is for the governments to do the job mm -hmm. of their own uh, uh, recovery, if I may, as regards the sustainability of public finance. And uh, now we have all the countries in Europe, and I would say in the euro area as well and out of the euro area, with the uh, adjustment program, and we are calling on all of them to be very, very strict in following what has been decided and what they have themselves fixed as regards their own targets. Uh, Mr. Trichet, I also wanted to talk a little bit about the EFSF. Would you welcome the fact that this entity could buy government bonds? We have said uh, on behalf, uh, and I have said on behalf of the Governing Council, that we would uh, call upon the governments to improve the functioning of this uh, stabilization fund, both in quantity and in quality. And quality meaning flexibility, uh, be having had uh, uh, and uh, uh, deciding a new doctrine which would be more flexible. So in quality, can I interpret or can I understand that actually you would be in, in favour of the EFSF to be able to buy these bonds or am I misinterpreting? Uh, again, I don't want to dictate uh, their behaviour to governments. I know that it is complex. There are a number of tools that they can utilise, a number of uh, possibilities. I would certainly not exclude that one which uh, I would consider useful in certain circumstances. And, and that would also, of course, take some burden out of the ECB to try and calm the markets. Well, ourselves, as you know, we have a number of non-standard measures that we have decided in the past. This uh, program to purchase securities is part of these non-standard uh, uh, measures. And we do that to help restoring a more normal functioning of our monetary policy transmission mechanism. 
it is something that we consider important in some circumstances, in some cases, to permit that monetary policy transmission to be correct, mm -hmm. as correct as possible under the circumstances. Should it also be able to recapitalize banks, something that Mr. Stark is in favor of? Well, again, the uh, recapitalization of banks is something that uh, is uh, part of uh, practically all the programs mm. that are followed by the various governments and uh, certainly part of the programs that are followed with the help of uh, uh, the uh, European governments and of the IMF. So it's part of, the, of those programs, of course. Do you think that this comprehensive plan, this bailout too, if we can call it that, will be the silver bullet that we've been waiting for? Again, this is the responsibility of the government. As I always said, each institution, each authority, each, uh, even each individual, each responsible individual has to be up to its responsibility. Times are demanding. They are demanding for all, absolutely all, of course the private sector as well as the public sector, and all advanced economy are in a difficult situation. It is the case of Japan, the case of the US, the case of all advanced economy without exception. We are ourselves, of course, uh, with this crisis, which is the worst since World War II, could have been the worst since World War I, had we not uh, taken uh, uh, taken very, very bold decisions, obviously, particularly uh, governments themselves, and it's the reason why they have a lot of problem to regain control of their uh, own finance. But I would say, yes, indeed, all authorities have to be up to their responsibility. And as I used to say, we are in Europe and we have to review the European functioning, as well as the US or Japan have to review their own functioning. But in Europe, we have EMU, Economic and Monetary Union. We are responsible for MU, yeah. Monetary Union. We have done what was called upon us. We delivered. I mentioned the track record. EU has to be improved. Economic Union has to be improved. I call and we call for a quantum leap in governance of economic union. But, but if we just concentrate on the EFSF also, do we need to see a lowering of interest rates for the countries that have applied for the I don't the want to enter into any details. I don't want to substitute myself to the governments that have re the responsibility. Maximum flexibility. That's our uh, own the most message. Important. That's the message. Mr. Trichet, we had a, a quite a worrying poll that was done on Bloomberg, and actually 56% of investors we spoke to are expecting uh, some kind of restructuring or even some kind of default from one of the peripheral countries by 2016. Are you surprised by this, or are you just as concerned as those investors? I would say they have programs. We have programs uh, in case of uh, Greece and in case of Ireland, which are... Uh, programs of both, I would say, the international community with the IMF and the European with the uh, judgment of the Commission and of the Council. The Commission was in liaison with us. So there is both, uh, there are both a judgment of the international community as a whole and a judgment of the European. And we are calling this country to follow the plan. Mm -hmm. And we control, as you know, every quarter uh, very uh, cautiously and atten attentively the uh, uh, implementation of the plan. That is what we are doing. And so, and so far you think they're, they're following the plan? For example, what happens if a country has to restructure? Would the Euro region be able to survive that? I mean, first of all, I uh, would say that it is not in the plan, as you know, and there has been, again, decision in the IMF and uh, in Europe. We have the progressive implementation of decisions that were difficult to take, undoubtedly courageous, and have to be implemented. I'm not surprised that, of course, observers and savers are waiting, exactly as in our case, to see the facts and the implementation of the plan. But this is decisive. What is decisive is you do the job, and it's true for all, absolutely all advanced economy. You do the job. In five years from now, though, if we look at the Eurozone, will they have more members than we do today, or, or less members? I mean, we start... 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> those questions, I have them since the very beginning. We were supposed to have zero members. Then we were supposed to have only a handful of members. Then we started with 11 members, which was something which uh, has been considered as absolutely impossible by a lot of observers before the euro was set up. Then from 11, we came to 17, only 12 years afterwards, uh, because uh, it was at the beginning of this year that uh, Estonia joined us. So it is an historical process which is going on. And uh, I have to say those who, and they were very numerous from time to time, who were betting on the fact that we won't do the job, uh, we have proved a little bit uh, out of the reality. So we will see, it's hard work, and uh, we will see uh, how many uh, additional members are there. We are telling the additional members, those who are you know, called to enter because they have signed the Maastricht Treaty, we tell them it is very serious. Mm -hmm. You have to be sure that you meet the requirements. Mm -hmm. To enter into the euro area means that you are prepared to do that. And uh, I uh, expect, of course, that we will be more numerous uh, in uh, five years' time, ten years' time, and so forth, of course. Uh, Mr. Trusha, you're stepping down from the ECB yeah. later, later this year. Do you have any plans Indeed. of what you're going to do afterwards? <laughs> well, we will see. No, no plan at all for the present moment. For the uh, moment. I don't envisage at all what I would go, uh, do afterwards. So you'll decide later. Mr. Yeah. Trusha, thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure.